so in today's class we are going to start another topic okay uh, in previous topic we have seen that what is software documentation now today we will see the types of software documentation okay so documentation types there are two types of software documentation one is internal software documentation and second one is external software documentation both are parts of our software documentation but these have different definitions and this work differently so let's see what is the different types of software documentation first one is internal documentation that is internal software documentation what are the characteristics of that it is the code comprehension features that is whenever we are writing the code so that is the technical part of our software or software development so in that technical part whatever things are going on whatever code you are writing that is going to be whatever thing is been worked in your code or in your particular software that is written in that code okay so that is the functional part or the technical part operational part but the comprehension features means the comments which we write against those particular lines of codes or the features that how the identifiers are used how the variables are are used so these particular features are the comprehension part of our particular code the functional part operational part are like suppose i am writing like this that a plus b is equals to something okay suppose a plus b equals to c if i am writing an integer part that is a b c again i am initializing that c equals to 0 so this kind of thing is done so this is my operational part right this is what my operational part is this one but this particular thing is my comprehension feature that or if you are writing some comments that c equals to 0 so c we are assigning c equals to 0 so these kind of comments are written or suppose in some particular line if printf is used some particular lines are written and you are in comment you are writing printing value okay so these comments these are what these are the comprehension features of your particular code and this one is the operational feature of your particular code since this is making some operations in your code okay some operations are being done but this particular comments or this kind of identifiers or this kind of variable uh, assigning these things are our comprehension uh, things okay that we are assigning something right or we are declaring something we are commenting something or the variables we are showing or we are uh, just taking these variables okay these kind of things are what these are our comprehension features so it is the compre code comprehension features provided as part of the source code itself it is not you are not going to get it from another part or another thing this is only the part of your source code if you are writing a particular source code then these particular things comes within the source code this is my operational part or anything else which i will be writing that will be my operation part but these comments or this kind of kind of initialization the structuring part code structuring part or the headers which we use these things they are not the operational part they are the comprehension features of our code that is these are showing how we are, what kind of things we are assigning to our particular code or what kind of things we are taking help of help in our particular code but they are not operational features operational features are those where you are using some kind of uh, mathematical uh, task or some other things that are our uh, uh, particular different codes are used for characters also we have seen that how we are concatenating the uh, concatenating the characters anything else that things are known as operational type but these are our comprehension type okay so here what is that that is our your code comprehension features that that is in your internal documentation okay now provided through appropriate modules and comments embedded in the source code appropriate modules which we are using and the comments these things are that the comments that which are embedded appropriate modules which are embedded and the comments which are embedded within your source code these things are being taken as your 
comprehensive features of your particular code right and also provided through the useful variable names that is here we are writing some variable names then this is also your comprehensive features okay second that is a variable name that module and function headers the headers which we use that is has include or not has include that void include when we are making some void main this one hash include this is your particular header file which you are using so these kinds of header or these kinds of things are your comprehensive features that is your function headers right and code structuring the structuring of your code these kinds of comments are showing the stru structuring of your code if some comments are given how this thing is going to be happen what i am doing in this particular line that we write through by showing some comments so this is also your comprehensive part of your code and the code identifiers what kind of code identifiers we are using okay so those things are also your comprehensive features and use of user defined data types when you are we are uh, making some user defined data types those data types are also the part of your comprehensive features so these all things each and everything which we have shown here these all things just make this internal documentation it is embedded in the source code itself you are not taking this out from another site or you are not taking it out from another part okay it is only embedded in your source code only okay so these kind of things are basically your internal documentation these all things are embedded in this internal documentation now out of all these documentations meaningful variable name is most useful in understanding the code meaningful variable name when you whenever you are writing the variables okay you have to see that meaningful variable names are used okay that whenever you are writing a function if you are using here abc then if when after doing the particular calculation you have to see that this is my sum so if i am writing this i have to see that c is equals to or sum is equals to a plus b so this meaningful variable name that i am doing a addition here or i am doing a difference here that is the minus minus uh, subtraction here okay so these kind of variable names are meaningful variable names are also very important in internal documentation whenever you are going for a internal documentation you have to every time you have to say that meaningful variable names should be given previously also we have seen that variable names should be like that that it, it, they can show what function they are going to do so this is very important that meaningful variable names are important than that, that in documentations now obviously in contrast to the common expectation that code commenting would be the most use, useful here what we think that code commenting is everything here we know that whenever we are writing a code commenting that is everything no like suppose here example style of code commenting does not help in understanding the code here what we are writing someone have written that sorry someone had written that here a is equals to 10 so that means what 10 is assigned to a right value of 10 is assigned to a but if some commenting had been done like this that a made 10 that a had been made 10 no this kind of commenting may not useful in understanding your code because this is not the part what we are going to do we are just assigning this 10 to our variable a but if someone had commented that a made 10 that a had been made 10 but this is not possible for any programmer to just see the commenting maybe some comments have been given but to see the comment just to see the commenting and you can just understand what kind of function is going on no only comments are not useful for understanding any function so what we have writing code commenting does not help in understanding the code it can show what kind of operation is going on or it can give you a particular idea of that code but it is not helpful in understanding the whole code then so this kind of commenting only the commenting code commenting is not useful so a common expectation is what that if we are writing a code for those who doesn't know this particular code who those who are beginners for them only the code commenting is sufficient that is a common expectation but no from contrast of this what all those things that name of the particular variable should be 
depending on their function each and everything your code is structuring everything is needed for an internal perfect internal documentation so obviously this kind of code commenting is not sufficient now when carefully commented meaningful variable names still are more helpful in understanding piece of code when you are writing a particular comment okay that is carefully commented meaningful variable names are still more helpful meaningful variable names when you are using and you are commenting you have to write it very nicely or the function whatever thing is going on whatever operation is going on you are doing you have to write the meaningful variable names as well as what is happening you have to write in a very brief manner or we have to write that particular operation very nicely so that one can understand from your commenting in that case that are more helpful in understanding a piece of code so you have to see whenever writing an internal documentation you have to take care that whatever you are writing in the comments also the comments should be in a very specific manner right every variable name should be there correctly as well as the whatever operation it has been done that should be written also nicely and perfectly so that your inter whole internal documentation will be a perfect one so good organizations usually ensure good internal documentation good organizations they mainly provide a very good internal documentation it is very important so basically internal documentation is what it is those things the comprehensive features of your code which is embedded within your source code not it's it's not coming from any outside part okay that is your only your source code is providing you the internal documentation that now let's come to our external documentation what is our external documentation external documentation it is provided to various various types of supporting documents we have seen in previous class that what are the different kinds of documents which which we have seen as software documentation what kind of documentations are there which makes the software documentation right so here what are the various types of documentations which basically makes the external documentation internal means one within my code in my code external means outside my code okay yes it is coming from my code but is it is outside the code that is your usual manual user manual whatever the you are providing to the customer how the user will use the particular software that user manual is a part of your external documentation that each and everything is provided as i have told you previously also each and everything that how a person when a layman is taking your particular software he should have that user manual and he can understand each and everything from that user manual only that how i am going to use that particular software then so user manual is important srs document that is our software requirement specification document it is also very important since all the requirements gathered analyzed everything had been jotted down in that srs document so srs document is also a very important part of your particular external documentation then design document whatever thing had been done in the whole designing phase that is a blueprint of your software that particular designing document is also been pro, uh, embedded or it is also taken in under this external documentation and the test document how your document of your software have been tested okay so this test document is also taken as a external documentation that is how your software had been tested and what kind of inputs have been given what kind of output have been got or it is working as the user needs it or as per the user need so our user expectation so these are the things whole things which are embedded in this external documentation these particular documents supporting documents makes the external documentation internal documentation is coming both only provided through your code but external documentation is made from some supporting documents that is not from a particular document is coming from those supporting documents when they are taken together they are making the external documentation that so a systematic software development style ensures that all these documents are produced in an orderly fashion what is an orderly fashion that is our sdsc model is showing the different phases right that is your feasibility study right that requires
requirement phase. What you will get from requirement phase? That is your SRS document. Then, then your designing phase, design document, coding phase, your course, that is your source code. Then, your testing phase, test document, and maintenance. So, this is what is the whole sequence. So, it should be in an orderly fashion. That is user manual, how you are going to use. Then, the SRS document for this particular phase. Then, design document for this phase. Test document for this phase. So, it should be in an orderly manner. It, can, it cannot be in a haphazard manner. You cannot provide any, any particular document in a haphazard manner. It should be sequentially as according to the phases of your SDLC model. So, this is what is coming under the external documentation. Then, it is clear that in internal documentation, source code and how the structuring of your source code is done, identifiers, variables, commenting, everything is being taken as in the internal documentation. It is provided in the internal documentation. But in external documentation, that is the comprehensive features of your source code. And in external documentation, what is going on? Some supported documents have been taken together and they are providing with the external documentation, but in an orderly fashion. It is very important. So, this is what was in our document software documents. Okay. So, documentation, software documentation is what? The type of different documents which we have used. That is in every phase we are getting some documents. And it had two parts. That is our internal documentation, software documentation and external software documentation. So, these things are being in under your software documentation. So, if you have any kind of query related to today's topic, you can ask me in the comment section. And if you have any suggestions, you can give me that also. Please like my channel, subscribe it and share it with your friends. Till then, take care and have a good day.